The Hedgehog. A fierce little beast, uh, a nice opening to play against the English opening. And uh, it's, a, it's a line or opening I have used uh, throughout most of my career. And today I'm going to share with you my favorite game in The Hedgehog. And it will probably turn into a series on The Hedgehog uh, if, if uh, there's enough interest on this channel for, for this. Uh, I hope so. And, um, and here uh, we will see a game from 1982. It's Lev Pulgievsky, a strong Soviet player uh, against Lubomir Tasnik, which I have known for many years and played in the same team in Hamburg. And at the moment, he's also helping me as a national coach for Denmark. Uh, he's, he's a great player. And this was, uh, I think, his masterpiece. But uh, let's see if you agree. Um, and let's get on with it and see some chess. Uh, this is, uh, of course, the Reti, and here we transpose to some sort of the English uh, opening. And uh, Polugievsky is, of course, most famous for the Polugievsky variation of the Sicilian, and he wrote a book about the Grandmaster preparation, where he he uh, explained all about his fear and his doubt and uh, how he lived and 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 breathed with 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 this opening. And, and of course, this was before the computers took over and, uh, and people had uh, cloud Indians and, and could do whatever. So, so I think uh, the Pulgievsky of today, it would be something different. But he was a very strong player uh, who was excellent at calculation and of course had a very sound and clear style. Uh, and Lubomir uh, Tashnik is a little bit, he's black, he's a little bit the same uh, style. He also plays some uh, sort of uh, flexible openings with white and plays the hedgehog with black and an idol like uh, Polgievsky and the Grinfeld. I don't think Polgievsky played the Grinfeld, but uh, he might as well have. Uh, and they are, they are pretty good at dynamics and they are both pretty good at calculation. And, and of course, it's, uh, it's actually a, a, a kind of a normal style to have. If, if you're not super positional, then you should seek healthy positions uh, from the start and then just calculate the hell out of people. Uh, that's a good uh, smart style. Okay, and this marks the beginning of the hedgehog. Black places his bishop on uh, here, uh, opposing the bishop here. So, and sometimes they will be exchanged. And all this is, is normal. Here there are some nuances. Uh, black can start with, with, with a6, he can start with d6, or as here, bishop e7, which is, I think, nowadays considered the most uh, correct move order. And white goes d4, and this is uh, the open hedgehog, and this is clearly the main line. And here white takes with the queen. It's considered easier to play for black if you take with a knight. Uh, then black is not supposed to have any problems. You will exchange the bishop and, and white's king will be slightly weakened and, and black will have more maneuvering space. So at the moment uh, uh, white keeps the, the opposing bishop's dynamics here. And d6. And uh, this is all uh, common. And, and here, uh, this move is, is actually a little bit annoying, and black try, often try to avoid this. Uh, yeah, probably has to go a6, and, and white will take on, on, uh, on f6. But at that time, uh, rook d1 was also a, a, a well-known move, and a6. And this is sort of, uh, this is how uh, you set up the hedgehog. It's like this. Uh, black sits behind uh, these uh, quills that's pointing out and is ready to sting uh, w w at white at, uh, when white goes too far. Uh, so it looks very passive, but it has some hidden dynamic features. Uh, mostly that black will, will have this counterattack and this counterattack, and sometimes he can just maneuver around uh, with, with the pieces. Uh, and it's it's not so easy to play as white. White has improved a lot in his understanding of this position. Uh, is now doing much better. Uh, especially, uh, white has realized that it's probably a good idea not to allow uh, the black to get a fully fledged hedgehog set up because then you 
you really are in danger of getting stung by by some uh, vicious counterattack. So so at the at the moment, White is trying to blast. Uh, black off the board before he sets up his favorite position, and his favorite position is something like uh, like knight here, queen here, rook here, and the other rook here. Uh, that would probably be be a, a, a normal setup. It's always a big question where the rooks belong up if they belong on c8, d8, or e8. Uh, that depends a little bit on what white does. This is all expert stuff. Anyway, let's go on. And here, uh, I, I think. Uh, knight d5 is actually a little bit um, is is nowadays considered a little bit annoying for black, leading to a slightly better ending for white. But back then he played this move, which was also not a bad move. And knight here, getting ready to meet uh, bishop here with knight c5. Uh, and and most white's attempt uh, goes at. Um, going after this pawn. This is, at the beginning, the weak spot in black's position. And e4. And uh, this contains a little trap, uh, because in this position, if white black uh, castles here, uh, then white will go bishop a3, and after queen c7, oh, well, I should show it, right? Uh, this is a, a well-known trap, castle, bishop a3, hitting this one, and um, and after this e5, the ending is clearly better for white. So you will just take and uh, and take on e5. And the problem for black is that this pawn will be weak, and uh, the, and 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 white is often actually threatening this, followed by knight a5, a4. So so this is uh, and 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 white are, are are clearly coming first to the open files. So. Uh, in this position, why, uh, it's smarter to cover uh, d6 immediately at b8 and not c7, because queen c7 is met by the same uh, trying to go into an ending. So here, uh, and, and here after this, uh, the, the ending is not so bad, because black will, uh, white will have to take with the queen on e5. Okay, I will show it again. Um, here, 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 and in this position, um, it is considered that this move uh, equalizes for black because the ending is much better with the rook on b8 and the knight on d7 and exchanging the bishop, exchanging the queen, and it's supposed to be fine for black. So um, that's the, the idea behind queen b8 that looks a little bit weird because it, it, I'd, ideally you would like to have a queen here. Okay. Bishop b2. White gives up any hope of uh, attacking d6 and um, and just get on with it. And we have a normal position here. White's plans, uh, of course, there are some uh, some X-ray effect on on d7. Uh, but but in general, his idea probably consists of something like this 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 pushing back back and and maybe starting an attack on the king side. Meanwhile, he has to look out for this break and this break. Uh, this break is usually not as effective when the bishop is on here and this knight here is covered. Uh, that's also expert stuff. Rook d8. That's uh, that's a little unusual uh, because sometimes uh, you would like the rook here instead. Um, a4 and um, why is 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 more or less giving away this square, but but making sure b5 is not going to happen anytime soon. Queen c7, black is connecting the rooks uh, in a good way now, and is is almost fully developed. Queen e3 and rook here, and this is a setup. As I said before, I think the more is more usually to have this one here, uh, but in general, and also here we could see that would make a nice X-ray here. Um, queen e2. And okay, we have an interesting position here. Blacks plays a slightly provocative move, uh, knight here, and and the blacks white's problem is that this bishop here is not really helping the dark squares here. So f4 here is bad because there will be a check and there will be a knight jump here. So uh, so he cannot really move the knight at the moment. So he played a3, and here comes uh, black with the and we think that okay, black is slightly passive but has a solid position. White's plan is is pretty obvious, pushing, 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 and um, and maybe of course he would like to have this rook here, uh, which would have helped him a lot. I think 
playing h3 was a mistake because in this position black plays a marvelous move h5 and um, and the idea of course is that the black squares especially this square is weak due to the bishop sitting here on b2 um, there's nothing wrong with the white's position yet. Uh, f4 and pushing the knight, and it goes to g6. And it's, of course, uh, eyeing this square. And here, white makes a mistake. Uh, he had to find something better. I think he should probably play this and give this square away, but, but avoiding uh, having the, the dark squared crushed like it we will see in the game. He played a very natural move. He played knight f3. Uh, and the knight, of course, would love to sit here, uh, which, which is why you should sometimes should be careful about playing h5. But here black has a great move, uh, and he comes with a nice push. Boom! This is, uh, and this is something, this is uh, the problem with white's position is it's, it's actually, the, in the hedgehog, it's generally unstable because you never know when uh, when this will come or this will come uh, and also in this position black he even played h5 so and that's that's pretty annoying and a lot of players do very badly against the hedgehog and there are some who do do, do very well so d5 what's going on okay that's attacking something you quickly realize that something like this is not very nice uh, uh, they're still coming here, and all Black's pieces will be very, very active. Uh, he will sacrifice something, but he will get super active pieces, and the White King uh, will start to lack cover. So he took a very natural move. And here we see that, that having a Rook here would probably be very nice in this position. So uh, White is, is probably regretting that he didn't take time out for this move, uh, because here comes H4. Ooh, so we just don't even take back. Just play h4. What's the point behind that? The point is that something like taking here, then comes this move. And uh, after something like here comes this move. And we really see that black's, white's king position is totally uh, uh, getting destroyed here. Uh, he's, he's simply lost in this position. So this very nauseous and, and, and out of the blue uh, vicious attack. So White sees that, okay, I'm in trouble here. I need to get rid of some pieces and especially this, this very annoying knight that's, that's hitting all the, the important squares have to go. Um, and, and so take, take, but this allows the queen into the game. And uh, we are again seeing the queen near the kill zone. We also see that, that this bishop may play a role. This bishop is, is definitely going to play a role, or it might also settle here, and, uh, and there will be something here, and, and all already uh, the rooks are also playing, so white is actually totally destroyed here. And, and, and even though black played h5, his king is totally safe. And, um, and White uh, tries to calculate all the way through, but he doesn't really see what's going on, so he played e5. And by the way, I don't think there was any salvation here. Um, so how to finish off the game? Of course, start with a check. There's only one move, and that's here. And uh, what do you want to do? You want to give a check with the knight here, right? That would be nice. So what to play? Boom! And I'm sure Lubomir was very happy when he played this move. Um, that check is really, really nasty. So there's no choice. You have to take. And then comes the quiet move here. And that's actually threatening mate in two different ways. Three different ways. It's threatening mate here, it's threatening mate here, and it's threatening mate here. Um, that's also the problem with taking on d2. Then uh, simply uh, queen here uh, mates the black, the white queen. So white king is in very serious trouble. Uh, the, we also see that, that the bishops here are, are pretty nasty, pretty nice uh, diagonals helped by the king. So here comes this, 
And of course, what do you take with? You of course take with the rook. You want it. This bishop is much stronger than a rook, uh, pointing all the way down to the king here. And uh, white is is of course lost and um, tries to to do something. White black could play anything here, but at the moment uh, white is threatening um, a perpetual check, check and back, right? So uh, that something will have to be done with that, and you can see it. I know you can see it. We are we've seen all these what all these bishops can do. So what do Lubomir play here? What's the grand finale? in this position boom check queen sacrifice king has to take check and here um, Pulgievsky resigned it's a double check so the king will have to move there's only one place to go then now comes another check king will have to go here and comes the other rook and all the pieces are participating in mating the queen and after this it would be made. So after um, after this move, uh, Pulgievsky resigned, and uh, we can congratulate uh, Lubomir on a game that he can show his grandchildren uh, when he's he can no longer walk, and he will still feel like a superhero. A great game and a and a big inspiring uh, thing to for people who like to play the hedgehog. Uh, if there are, is, is uh, interest, I will, I will show more Hedgehog games. I have a lot. I also played a lot myself. Uh, and also know all the theory in this opening, so it might turn into a theory series. There are some problems for Black at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, this was GM Talks. Thank you for watching.